What clues to the living and cultural past can be discovered in South America? Ecuador's Galapagos Islands remain a living laboratory of Charles Darwin's landmark theory of evolution. The sophisticated layout of Machu Picchu's legendary ruins are as accurate today as when each of these rocks were locked into place. My wife has just retired from teaching and we are at that age where we're recognizing that our parents are slowing down and things are happening in their lives, that their lives are winding down. And so what that says to all of us is um, we need to get out there and do the things that we can while we can. This massive citadel served as a stronghold for Manco Inca, leader of the native resistance against the conquistadors. In the Battle of Ollantaytambo, the Inca army managed to hold off the Spanish forces from a set of high terraces and to flood the Spanish position below, hindering their cavalry. There was another battle that was fought here, Manco Inca and the Spaniards, one of the few battles that the Inca won uh -huh. against the Spanish invaders here in Ollantaytambo. Ruben's been a fantastic guide. Any questions you have? are not too silly or too embarrassing. For different families uh, living in each one uh, of He's extremely knowledgeable about the Incan culture and Peru. I think it's just wonderful. Just learning about the culture of the, uh, the people and being able to visit these magnificent structures that uh, were built hundreds of years ago. Area of the Incan city facing east. Yeah, so that one is facing west because of the sunlight is very mild. <laughs> Today at Tambo, I chose not to go with the whole group up the side of the mountain. I went into the ruins halfway up and I told Ruben that I'm just gonna be here. I wanted to feel the ruins. Ollantaytambo sits at over 9,000 feet above sea level and is one of the most common starting points for the three-day hike known as the Inca Trail. Check out the rock, the great view. <laughs> they did a beautiful stonework. As you can see, all this is original architecture, original Inca stonework. Uh, I like learning the history as well as the climbing. So, so much of this culture I didn't know. Oh, very nice. Mi bueno. Ah, gracias. Nice. There you go. The other things are interesting parts of the culture and understanding where we're visiting and what has become of the culture. Oh, wow. Oh. Wow. <laughs> How are you? Peru has the highest school attendance rates in Latin America. Now they are going to take us to the inside of the classroom. The experience at the school was fantastic. Those are some of the most lovely children I've, I have met. School supplies here. We went and visited students at a school that is supported by Grand Circle Foundation and had a nice visit with the kids there. They were very enthusiastic. They are going to be happy with this. What would you like to do when you grande? Liz would like to be a teacher. Yeah. She wants to be an artist. Yeah. They have such great expectations in life. They uh, want to be teachers and and uh, doctors. She wants to know what kind of crops you grow. Uh, I go onion. Tiene onion, cebolla, and apio. Celery, okay. celery, celery. celery. <laughs> Inspiration for learning works both ways in this cross-cultural setting. The train ride. There's nothing, the, I, nothing the, I haven't loved. That trolley ride. The, the taxi. The, the, the taxi the tricycle <laughs> ride. It is a common sight in the rural areas of Peru to see three-wheeled taxis, locally known as moto taxis, or taxi cholo. No. 
meeting with the family was, uh, was absolutely wonderful. They have a beautiful home. Uh, the food was beyond my recognition in some of it, but then also to taste it was just, just great. Excellent. 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 It's been great trying the different... I still don't know what I've eaten. <laughs> <laughs> the guinea pig originated in the Andes and has long been part of the traditional cuisine in these rural highlands. Look, what's what we got over here? Hey. The guinea pig. I tried it. <laughs> <laughs> Tastes like chicken. <laughs> All these vegetables you see here in the market are fresh, locally grown. The variety of produce at a Peruvian open market is overwhelming. There are more than 400 varieties of potatoes alone. Some are dried until they are as hard as stone. Brown one over there you see is freeze dried potatoes. Yes. The train, love the train coming up here. I'm here. The narrow gauge track of this rail line allows the train to make the sharp corners of this steep canyon along the Urumbamba River. Its destination, Machu Picchu. I'm finally here. I've been waiting a lifetime to get here. Perched at 8,000 feet on a narrow ridge in the high Peruvian Andes, this lost city of the Incas was constructed without the benefits of either the wheel or iron tools. The granite stone was cut so precisely that no mortar was needed to hold the walls in place. The sun rays come through the gate and they go inside of the temple of the sun through the window, you see, but on the left this time. The design of the Temple of the Sun allowed the Incas to track the sun's position, to identify the winter solstice, and to schedule the harvest for their empire. Little by little, step by step. The real benefit is we stay overnight in Aguas Calientes. You get a taste and an experience of the overall layout of the place and then we can go back and see more of Machu Picchu on the following day. Amanco decided to send the chosen women to Machu Picchu and Machu Picchu was taken as a refuge of the chosen women. This is my first trip and I wanted to see Machu Picchu and the Galapagos. We've been traveling with Grand Circle and OAT for a long time and we have fabulous trips with them so why go with anyone else? <laughs> The Galapagos Islands are world-renowned for the creatures that live here. Each island supports animals who are uniquely suited to their setting. Observations of their adaptations to their environment became the evidence for naturalist Charles Darwin and his theory of evolution. The Galapagos tortoise, which can live more than 170 years. The blue-footed booby. But they are kind of doing the booby I've done things I never thought I could do before. I've been places 
I never thought I'd go before, and I've just learned so much about Ecuador. It's been wonderful. From the heart of the Amazon to the volcanic archipelago of the Galapagos. A journey beyond belief. Ecuador's all-inclusive wilderness awaits you. Well, I grew up in these islands of this, islands of Galapagos. That's an amazing place, an island uh, far away from the coast of the mainland South America. It's 600 miles. These are volcanic islands, and uh, I just was born there. I was just lucky that my family went there and they were pioneers in this island so it was amazing childhood and these islands are just surrounded by ocean and the and the waters are crystal clear so swimming snorkeling that was the i mean just were the games that we had as kids just going in the water play with the water and just just seeing these animals with big iguanas, these tortoises, <laughs> and that's really an amazing experience just to be looking at the birds, these frigate birds, just with the, with the pouches inflated. All these animals, I was just, at one point, were just lying down, looking to the sky, all these animals flying above me. That was really my, my best experience in my life. Well, landscapes in these islands are just so amazing because the geological part is the most interesting part of, this, uh, of these islands because these islands are young. It's only three to five million years ago when the volcanoes were erupting under the sea and then eventually it formed islands in the middle of the, in the, middle of the ocean. So these islands are young. Oh yes, there is one island, there is one island in the bay. It's called Bartolome Island and it has a rock with the name Pinnacle Rock, and we climb to the top, we climb to the volcano of the island. There are some lavas which are only uh, 100 years old, and you can just see, I mean, you can just imagine how was the beginning of these islands. Growing up in Galapagos, so different, because uh, it is something nice growing up with animals, but something I can say, Growing up with conservation is very nice. Galapo is one of the places that we don't talk about conservation. We live and act every day about that. To be in Galapagos is already something unique, you know, in Ecuador and in this beautiful planet. There can be a beach where you're just sitting there with a beautiful color of the water, where it's no garbage in the area, no plastic bottles, nothing like that. Then you are watching this beautiful landscape in a beautiful beach, nice weather, and then you have a sea lion passing by you or coming, smelling your leg, or a bird coming on your head or around, you know, and you're just quiet there, you just don't move because you are part of that. No, that is some unique places and it's almost all around. Any place you decide to sit, you can fly away of everything and to be with the nature around. 